Good morning, everybody. It is our first full day here in Venice. Uh, we just got dressed. We're doing some work on the computer, so we're getting a little bit of a late start, but we're getting ready to go to um, San, Mo San Marco Square, probably the most touristy place we'll go to here. And then uh, from there, we're just gonna walk around the alleyways, try and get as lost as we can, and find a little mom and pop restaurant to, to get some food. So that's the plan. So we're gonna head to the square right now. All right, making our way to St. Mark's Square. Uh, the significance of St. Mark's Square, back in like the 1600s, uh, St. Mark's skeletal remains were actually smuggled in to Venice, giving it uh, religious significance. And that religious significance stems directly out of St. Mark's Square, so that's where we're going right now. Euro for a gondola ride. <laughs> We're embracing the, the touristic tendencies, but not that much. No. So there's a few less canals like in the deeper portions of the city than I expected. There's a lot less canals and more like walkways than I thought there was gonna be. I thought like everything was a canal, but it's not really the case. This is so cool. There's just little alleyways and everything you're gonna explore. It's like a, it's like an adult's like jungle gym playground. It's awesome. So these are masks and costumes for Carnival, which is obviously everyone knows it like the biggest festival in Venice. It happens all through the month of February, pretty much up until when Lent starts. And here's some of the masks and costumes that people wear during that time. All right, here we are. This is San Marco Square. We're finally here. The crowd is not nearly what I expected it to be. No, and it is off season still, but it's not, it's not too crowded, it's beautiful. I thought it was gonna be like Sunny. shoulder to shoulder, dude. Yeah. But here we are, we're gonna show you around a little bit. Wow. That is amazing. Yeah, so that right there is St. Mark's Basilica, the Campanile de San Marco. Okay, so St. Mark's Basilica is still behind me. I have to say I've never seen a church like that or a cathedral like that anywhere in Europe before this. It's just decorated. I know that sounds simple, but it's decorated very uniquely. I'm sure there are architectural terms for what I'm seeing, but I'm There's just not sure what they are. There's lots of layers to it. It's decorated and like gilded in gold, you know, and gold. All of all these religious motifs. But it's also like colorful too. Mm -hmm. St. Mark's Basilica is huge. It's really cool. The line to get in is pretty intense. We're just gonna kind of gather up some things we might want to do and go see when we're walking around today, and then we'll go try and hit them tomorrow. Because I mean, it would be a couple hours probably before we get in. I love like little things about a place. Like the railings of this bridge, they're crazy smooth. From like years of people like leaning their elbows on it to like look down this little alleyway. I just think that's so cool. It shows the age of a place, the patina of a place. So Rick Steve, I was listening to his podcast about Venice, one of them, and he said that Venice has a patina of happiness. Ooh, I like that. Yep. Okay, so you come around on this walkway heading to St. Mark's Basilica. It looks like this. Lots of people everywhere, everywhere. You turn off one street and start going in off the tourist stuff and look at what it looks like. Mm -hmm. 
Walk down here and there's literally five people. It's easy to escape the tourism, if you want. Some of, some of it's really cool, some of it you gotta battle through. But, if you wanna get off the track, away from the tourism, it's super easy. It could be as simple as taking a left. Marshall's trying to sing opera in these little alleyways, and the poor people who live here are probably like, well, It's more. <laughs> <laughs> Each house has a number. So 5561 five, all the way up to 6000. So there's no like repeating numbers. It just goes up to 6000 and that's it. So the size of street definitely varies here in Florence. Some streets are enormous and some are about that wide. Noon, exactly. We're like walking around looking for a place to eat, and we're kind of surprised like no one really looks that good. I thought like everywhere we would look here in Italy would just be like delicious food, but it's just like, oh, it doesn't look very appetizing, a lot of it. So we're trying to find a, like a good local place to eat, but it's turning out to be harder than uh, than expected, so. Yeah, we've been walking for probably like an hour. Nothing. Here's my sandwich. It's got ham on it, obviously, some cheese and arugula. It kind of reminds me of like the, t the consistency of jamon in Spain. There's olives baked into the bread. So mm. it's gonna get a little savory. Got some creaminess with the cheese, thick cheese layer. So I'm really excited. I think it's gonna be really good. Mmm. The cheese is real pungent. It's a real like pungent, like stinky, melty cheese. Mmm. That is super good. Oh. The meat. It's real tender and flavorful. It's like candied, good and savory. Mm. Very, very good. I got ham, zucchini, and some type of cheese. I don't know about the zucchini, but it tastes very good. The bread is really nice and soft, but like so a little bit crispy. It's good. good. I want to try Marshall's. <laughs> His looks better. Good, right? This is better. Hands down. After all, spritz. After all, spritz. Amy doesn't like it. I, I think like it it's spectacular. He loves them too. What's wrong with them? Okay, so we just had a little drink over that cafe and some lunch, and we're about to go, is Marshy, inside the church so we can see from the cafe. Check it out. feels really traditional like the actual Venetian people live here. I haven't seen a tourist in a long time so that's always nice. Alright so we're at the Veperota sta station which is the ACTV station. You get these little cards when you buy online you, you get them printed off and then you just take them right over here to the terminal to get in. The terminals look like this. All you do is just scan your card. Yeah, let's right through. We are Salute. That's our stop. Right there in the middle. Salute. Okay, so the water tag or the Vaporetto system is a little confusing and it's a little expensive, like when you first see it, but I would say it's 100% worth it because gondola rides are 80 euro each. The little private boats, I'm sure, even more than that. A really good way to like get on a boat and like go down the Grand Canal. It's a cheap way to do it. And you get kind of the same experience, you know, cruising down the canal, seeing all this stuff, but you pay a fraction of the price and you can use it practically to get around. So if you come to Venice, I would suggest the, the ACTV system as a whole, even though it's a little inefficient, but I would still do it. I'm convinced we're staying in the best section of Venice. There's like no tourists where we're staying. We'll show you on a map, we'll like highlight where we're staying because it's awesome. There's no tourists, it's great. We so, love it over here. It's a nice reprieve from the 
Forest Field alleyways where my San Marco. Yep, but we're getting ready to get go back, take a little siesta, have another cup of coffee, and come back out. Okay, so we've settled on a restaurant. It was like out of the blue, and we were just walking along like a back alley, trying to find the, the most non-touristy spots ever, and literally every single person in here is speaking Italian, so we decided to come here. We're in the Dosodoro neighborhood at La Osteria San Barnaba. I got their carbonara up and wanted to try some classic carbonara for a while. Got some Prosecco to go with it. He recommended the fettuccine with seafood, and I love seafood. I was gonna get the squidding because I want to have that here. It's apparently really like traditionally Venetian, but she was like, no, 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 like get the fettuccine with um, all the uh, seafood. That's what they're known for here, I guess. I don't know. And I also got prosecco. We got some bread, and some croutons this time. Mm -hmm. Croutons good? Yeah. They're like full of herbs and like butter. Baked, they're very good. Okay, we just got our dinner. I got the fettuccine with seafood. Marshall got carbonara. Grazie. We just finished dinner and we're walking back to our Airbnb full and happy. I'm tired. The espresso that we've had all day is wearing off, at least for me. So I'm kind of cashing and I am oh, ready too. for bed. Me too. But it was a super fun day here in Venice. We walked the canals, we rode the Vaporetto. We had some delicious food, mm -hmm. some great coffee, great wine. Aperol, I tried my first Aperol spritz and me it changed too. my entire life. Very delicious. But now it is time to call it a night so we can do it again tomorrow. I'll show you guys more of Venice tomorrow. Woo! Venice is so cool. Super cool. Pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I just think that's so cool. I end everything with super cool. Super cool. <laughs>